Say, I need the Holy Ghost. I need the Holy Ghost. And tonight, you're about to receive something very, very special from God. They're going to be setting up a few little things behind me, but I want you to listen to me good, okay? We've got an amazing Father God. Did you know that? God is amazing. I love to tell him that. Because when I just think about all that he has given us and what he has done for us and who he is, he just blows me away. That he created this vast universe that we can't even imagine in our mind. Have you ever seen a picture of the universe? It's just gigantic. Have you ever looked at the stars at night? The Bible says that God knows each star by name. So now when you look up at the stars at night, you need to look up at a star and go, I wonder what your name is. Because God has given every star a name. And you know what? Did you know there's more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on every seashore of, on the earth? There's billions of galaxies out there. And there's hundreds of billions of stars in each galaxy. Say, God's big. And he knows every star by name. And you know what? He knows your name too. He knows your name and he loves you and he loves you so much. The Bible says that before you were even born, he knew you. The Bible says, get this before God ever create. I don't think I need this pulpit. Thank you though. That before God ever created the earth, he knew you say, wow, that is amazing. Look at me. Before God ever created the earth, he didn't only know your name. He had written a book about your life. And the Bible says he wrote down every detail in that book about your life. In that book about you, what is your name in the yellow t-shirt? What? What is it? I can't hardly hear her. Sophie? So God has a book in heaven right now, Sophie. And that book is called the book of Sophie. And he has everything about you in that book. And inside that book about every one of you tonight in your book, it says, and on, what's the date today? June the, on June the 11th, 2021. Sophie will be in Cleveland, Tennessee at a place called The Ramp, and I'm going to fill her with my Holy Spirit. Oh. Come on, he has every one of us in this room tonight written in his book that we're in this place because you're not here by chance. He loved you before he ever made the earth. And when God made the earth and the devil came and messed his plan, you know what, you know what the devil did, don't you? God had made this beautiful world. He put Adam and Eve on it. And the devil came. And you know how he just messes things up. If the devil comes around, he just messes things up. But when the devil came and began to mess up God's, what God wanted for Adam and Eve, you know what God said? I've already got a plan. And so before he ever created the earth, God already had two gifts he was going to give the world. Did you know that God gives gifts? Do you like to receive presents? If you like to receive presents, raise your hand. I really like to receive presents from my husband, especially, who's watching. Hey, tell me if you like to receive presents. Come on. All right. All right. Good. Put your hands down. Because you know what? I believe there's some presents up here tonight. And I believe that what these presents are, are the presents that represent... The gifts, the two gifts that God gave all of us and every person that has ever lived on this messed up planet that the devil messed up, God gave these two presents to every single person that ever came from the heart of God to the earth. Everybody from Adam till now. He gave these two presents. Do you want to open them? Me too. Let's open them. I'm going to start with which one? Let me start with this one. I'm going to start with this one. 
Oh, look, 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 look on the tag. I'll read it to you on the tag. It says this, from God to the world. Whoa, you want to open it? Okay, let's do that. From God, wow, this is a holy gift. Even when I touch it, this is a holy gift. I can feel that it's a holy present from God. Wow. God, your gift to us. Let me see what's in it. Okay. Listen. Oh, my. Oh, wow. Look what he has put. There's a baby. You know what he put in that box? You know what he gave us? He gave us his son. Now listen to me. I feel the Holy Ghost. Because when God gave us his gift, when God sent this gift to the world, the Bible says, God so loved Sophie. God so loved the world. When the devil messed it up, God didn't just throw the world away and say, I'm just going to make the world just disappear and everybody on it, and I don't even want to see the world anymore. He could have, but he didn't. He so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son. In other words, he didn't have many. He had one son. And he sent his only son, what is his name? Jesus. So that whosoever would just believe in him wouldn't perish with the devil, but they could live forever with God. Do you know why this gift is very important, kids? Because this is the best God could give. Because it was his son was the only one that could set us free and bring us back to God. Because the devil had taken us away from God because we had obeyed the devil. The only way we could come back to God our Father was if he came himself through his son. Now that's why it's important that when we are asking you to give your life to Jesus, God won't take anything less than your all. God won't take anything less than you giving your life. You know why? Because when God loved you so much when he wanted you to be able to come back to him. God didn't say, hmm, he didn't look around heaven and go, hmm, I wonder what I could, what I could give so that Sophie, so that, so that Richard, so that Levi, I wonder what I could give so they could come to heaven and be with me. I wonder, hmm, I'll give, I'll give, I'll give part of my house. I'll give part of heaven. I'll give, I'll give those part of my houses so that, that they can come. No, that wasn't going to be enough. That wasn't going to be enough. When God looked around heaven, he didn't go, hmm, I just wonder what I could give. Because sometimes it's like we want to go to God and say, God, I'll just give you part of me. Well, God didn't give us just part of him. We can't go to God and say, God, I'll just, I'll give you my house. I'll give you this. I, no, no, none of that's enough for God. Because when God bought us and brought us to himself, he didn't just give a little trinket. He didn't just didn't give a little thing. He gave us his life. How do I know this is his life? Because I'm a mother, I'm a parent. And in a small comparison, we can't even comprehend his love. But I can tell you this, as God's example of trying to show us what he feels like as a father, he let us be parents. And I'm a mother. And someday you'll be mothers and dads. But the moms and dads in this room will know what I mean. I have two daughters. They are my life. And those two girls, Lauren and Lindsay, if I had a choice between either Karen, you can live, or Lauren can live, or Karen, you can live, or Lindsay can live, which one would you pick? Oh, there's no choice. I would choose all day long, let them live. Why? Because I love them more than I love me. Do you understand? In other words, they're my life. <laughs> Lauren's my life. Lindsay's my life. When God gave his son, listen kids, when God loved you, he looked over heaven and there was nothing good enough, nothing good enough that he could give for your salvation. So you know what God gave? He said, I'm going to give them my life. 
I'm going to give him my life. So he gave us his life in the form of his son, Jesus, who came to the earth. And when Jesus came to the earth as our gift from God, he came on this earth and he grew up to become a man. And the Bible says that Jesus, catch this, went about just doing good. Everywhere he went, he never did anything bad. He only did good and he helped people. The Bible said he just went around doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. Jesus said, I've come to destroy the works of the devil. And the devil hated Jesus. And so the devil used people to look at Jesus one day and say, kill him, crucify him. Because the devil thought, boy, I've got this. I'm going to be able to kill the gift God sent. I'm going to kill the son of God. And so the devil stirred up these people. They were saying, crucify him. Get rid of Jesus. We don't want God's son. We don't want the gift. And so what happened? God sent his son to the earth, and this is what we did. This is what we did to his son. Can you show them? So that little baby grew up, and this is what we did. This is what my sin did to him. This is what your sin did to him. And the devil thought he had won that day. But did the devil win that day? No. Do you know the Bible says if Satan had known, if the devil had known what Jesus was doing right there when he was hanging on that cross, if the Bible says if Satan had known what Jesus was doing, he would have never crucified Jesus. Because the devil didn't know that when he was pouring out his blood, he was setting us free from our sins. When he was giving his life, he was giving us life. Oh, come on. And when Jesus died and when his spirit left his body, you know what Jesus did for those three days? His spirit left his body and he walked right into hell. And he looked at the devil and he said, give me back the keys of authority that you stole. Come on. That's what Jesus did. Oh, hallelujah. You can take the picture away because Jesus didn't stay in that grave. He came out of that grave. And when Jesus came out of that grave, he came out with the saints with him that were held in captivity. Oh, come on. Jesus came out of that grave with the keys that the devil had taken from Adam and Eve. And Jesus walked out of that grave and he looked at me and you now and he said, now I'm giving you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. I'm giving you authority. In my name. That's what Jesus did. So Jesus doesn't stay dead. He comes back to life. And he walked around the earth and all the disciples were so happy about it. Because the disciples loved being able to be with Jesus for those three and a half years. He was there to be their friend when they were hurting. <coughs> he was there to help them. Whenever they didn't know what to do, Jesus was their best friend. And all of a sudden, when he came back from the dead, he tells the disciples, you know what, boys? I want to go back to be with my father. They were like, what? You told us you would never leave us or forsake us. What are you doing? I'm paraphrasing a bit. And Jesus said, I'm going to go be, be with my father. But I'm not going to leave you alone. When I get back to heaven... He's, Jesus said, I'm going to pray to the Father. I'm going to ask the Father to send you another gift. Whoa. There's another gift. First, it's this gift. Now, he's given us one more gift. Do you want to know what's in this box? I do too. Come on. Oh. Let's look. You want me to open it? Okay, we're going to open this gift. Hang on, let me look. I got to be careful. Wow, these, these gifts feel holy when I touch them. Let me see. Whew, this is special. Wow. So Jesus has gone to be with the Father, but he has said, oh, 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 oh. 
another tag, I see, I see it. From God to the world, another gift. Okay, what have you sent us, God? Wow, what is this? Whoa, whoa, what is this? What is, whoa, look at this. What is this amazing, amazing gift? Look at this gift, kids. What is happening? Can you see this? What is going on? Do you know what this gift is? I do. I hear you. What is this gift? Oh, this, honey, is the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, this gift is the Spirit of God. That's why, in other words, you think, well, what does it look like? He has looked like many different things. In one place in the Bible, he looked like he was like a dove. There was another place in the Bible, he took the form of fire. Another place in the Bible, he took the form of the wind. The Holy Spirit has many different forms, doesn't he? But the Holy Spirit is with us. Now, Joe is going to help me tonight. And Joe's going to represent the Holy Spirit. Now, sometimes Joe represents Jesus, because I think he kind of looks like Jesus, right? But tonight, he's going to represent at this moment, now a little bit later on, he'll represent Jesus. But right now, Joe represents the Holy Spirit. And you know what? I like, I like that he looks like Jesus, because if the Holy Spirit had a physical body, who would he look like? He would look like Jesus. Now, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. He is the spirit of Jesus because Jesus has gone to be with the Father in heaven, but the Holy Spirit has come and he is still the spirit of Jesus. So if he had a physical body, he would look just like Jesus because God is three in one. Say who they are, Father. Now I want to tell you something. I want to tell you how I received the Holy Spirit. Can I do that? When I was eight, no, don't leave Holy Spirit. I'm going to talk about you, okay? When I was a little girl, I was eight years old. Anybody eight years old? All right, good, good. Put your hands down. Eight years old is a big, it's a big deal. I was eight years old and I was, I was in church a lot. My mother was filled with the Holy Spirit. My grandmother was filled with the Holy Spirit. My great-grandmother was filled with the Holy Spirit. And my great-great-grandmother was filled with the Holy Spirit. My mother loved God. She loves to this day. I call her the best friend of the Holy Ghost to this day. She's 86 this weekend. And my mother would talk about, and I saw the power of God on my mother. I heard about my great-grandmother, how she would lay hands on the sick and they would recover. I heard about how God used my great-grandmother. Her name was Molly Lolly. And I was eight years old and I wanted what they had in God. I was just eight, but oh, I, I wanted the Holy Ghost for me, not just hearing them talk about it. I wanted the Holy Ghost. So one night in June of 1968, a few years ago, I was, I was in the Church of God of Prophecy. In fact, I've got my dress that I had on that night. This little dress now is over 50 years old. That night in June of 1968, I had this little dress on my mother had made me. I kept this dress because what happened to me that night when I had this little dress on was so important and so significant and it so changed my life. I saved this dress and it hangs now every day in my bedroom right, right in front of my bed so when I wake up every morning, I'm reminded of what happened to me when I was eight years old. I was standing on that night in summer's night in June of 1968. And the room I remember was hot and, and there were several people on the altar. But that night I came to that church service and I made up my mind. I'm going to receive the Holy Ghost. So when they gave an altar call and they gave people an opportunity to come, I went to that altar, buddy. I went down there to that altar and I just started praying. I can remember this kids like it was last night. And I remember being in the altar. I can remember where I was standing. 
And I remember standing there and I prayed for so long until, you know, it, I don't, I'd lost track of time. I remember it had been some time. In fact, I remember I'd prayed so long that my hair was wet with sweat. My dress was wet, wet with sweat. And I remember I was standing there and with all of my heart, kids, I prayed. I had both hands just like this. I prayed with both my arms up. And, and I prayed to God. I just forgot who was standing around me. And I remember what I was praying. I remember what it sounded like. I was going, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. And I remember I had tears rolling down my face. I was crying and I was, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Feel me. And I remember on one side of me, Sister Gan was going, glory, 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 glory. <laughs> Any Pentecostals in the room? <laughs> I just need to know if I got some Church of God friends in here anywhere <laughs> that know what I'm talking about. Sister, Sister Boy was on this side of me going, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Please tell me there's somebody in here that remembers. I just need to know. Come on, you may, you may not know what I'm talking about. Don't understand it. That's okay. But I can tell you this, it works. Come on, you may not understand it, but I can tell you this, it works. Because as I was praying, fill me with the Holy Ghost. Kids, all of a sudden, God filled me with the Holy Spirit. And I didn't receive a junior Holy Ghost. I received the same Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Come on. That's who came into me. That's who filled me that night. Oh, and I began to speak with tongues. I began to pray in another language. I began to pray in a language I didn't know. And I didn't care what anybody thought. And I used my voice out loud and with my hands up I just let the spirit of God that was in me flow like a river through me till I was speaking the language he wanted to speak oh that night changed my life oh that night changed my life and I remember when I went home now I had a friend I had the friend of the Holy Spirit. Come on. Everywhere I went. Come on. When I went to school the next day, Holy Ghost was with me. Yes, he was. It didn't matter where I went. He had come to live with me. Come on. Every day. Every day. I remember the next morning, I was in the third grade. I was in Miss Hudson's room. And I couldn't wait to go tell Miss Hudson that I'd received the Holy Spirit. I didn't know she went to a church that didn't believe in it because I couldn't imagine any church wouldn't believe in the Holy Ghost. I didn't know that. But I remember I went straight to her desk. I remember walking down the hall so excited to tell her. So I walked, come on, Holy Ghost. I went right down to, to her desk and I walked to her desk and I said, Miss Hudson, I got the Holy Ghost last night. <laughs> she told me to be seated. But you know what? Oh, I may have been seated in my body, but I was never seated again in my spirit. I've been burning ever since. I burn more every day. Oh, come on. He doesn't decrease. He increases. The fire gets stronger. Oh, every day, every day. Every day. Now, when I was a young girl, some days I wouldn't know what to do. And, and, and I would need direction. And some, there were some days as I was a teenager and I was trying to make decisions with my life. And, and, and I would be, now Holy Spirit, tell me. Lord, tell me. Jesus, help me. Help me know. And I would be wondering, Holy Spirit, Lord, help me make a decision. Help me know what you're saying to me, God. Oh, Lord, I'm just praying right now. Lord, I just pray today that you would just speak to me, God. Give me direction because your word says, Jesus, that the Holy Ghost would be a person that would lead me to truth. So, Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, Father, I'm asking you, lead me to truth. And I'd start praying. Oh, thank you. Oh, Lord, thank you for that word right there. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, just give me direction. Show me what to do. Oh, thank you, Lord. And I'd be reading the Bible, and that verse would just come alive. Because the Holy Spirit, listen, kids. The Bible says, Jesus said, when he comes, he's going to lead you when you don't know what to do. 
Say, I need the Holy Spirit. You know what else the Holy Spirit does when he comes in your life? And when he came in my life, you know what else he does? He gives you power for service. What does that mean? That means it doesn't matter how old I am. If I'm eight or 80 for that matter. Everywhere I go. Come on, even when I was a young girl. Whenever I'm at school. And I see somebody sick. Now then I've got somebody with me. I can't help Caroline if she's sick and I can't help it that Caroline can't walk I can't help it that she can't walk Caroline but you know what I see her at school so what do I do now then I've got somebody with me and when I put my hands on Caroline it's not my hands that's just touching her suddenly look get up Suddenly, whoa, come on. Now then, I've got the Spirit of God with me that's flowing through me. Come on. That's what the Spirit of God does. Now then, everywhere I go, when I see somebody that needs healing, Karen can't help them. I couldn't help them. But all of a sudden, come on, I see a girl right here. She needs help. She, whoa, come on, he's with me. And now then, she receives deliverance. Thank you, God. He's a counselor. He's power for service. Oh, thank you, Spirit of God. Who else is he? Come on, who else is he? There have been days I've been hurt. and Somebody hurt my feelings bad. Jesus said the Holy Ghost will be a comforter. And there have been some days people have hurt me really bad and betrayed me. There have been some days on my journey I was hurting so bad. I would be at my house all by myself just crying, but I wasn't by myself because you know what? I've got somebody called the Holy Ghost. He's my comforter. He's my helper. Come on, when I'm hurting and I feel like I'm by myself, I'm not by myself. The Holy Spirit is comforting me and he's helping me when I'm hurting inside. There's some days Jesus said that you won't know how to pray. You'll go to pray and you'll kneel down and you'll say, I don't know what to say. I don't know. Lord, I don't know how to pray. But now then, you know what happens? Because the Holy Spirit's with me. You lift your voice and the Holy Ghost starts praying through you kids. So when you don't know how to pray, you say, God, I don't know what to do about this situation. It's too big. I don't know how to fix it. I can't fix it. But Holy Ghost, you're in me and you're with me. So because the Holy Ghost is in me, ho, ho, and he's the the spirit of the Father. He knows what the Father wants to do. So he's in me. He just starts praying through me in his language and in groanings. And God, you know what happens? He prays to God. He prays to God the will of God. And God answers my prayer. That's what God does. One more thing. One more thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I want you to help me a little bit more in a little while. I'm going to tell them one more thing you do, but I'll see you in just a minute now. Now, one more thing the Holy Spirit does is he gives you boldness. Does anybody want the Holy Ghost yet? Sit up straight. Listen and look. I'm going to tell you one more very important thing the Holy Spirit does. Have you ever been afraid before of what people think about you? Have you ever felt like sometimes you were just a little shy? Have you ever felt like you were embarrassed about, you know, even what to say to people like if they're making fun of you or something, right? The Holy Spirit will give you boldness to not be afraid of what people think about you anymore. Say boldness. Boldness. Say boldness. boldness. I don't care if you're a woman. I felt to say that to some ladies in this room tonight. God wants to give you boldness for what he's called you to do. And free you from the lies of the enemy about your purpose in Jesus' name. You've known who you were supposed to be for a long time. Time's getting by. What he's told you to do, do it. Say boldness. Boldness. Now say, I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm almost finished. But you need to, no, you don't have to say that far. (laughs) 
but I want you to get this, okay? You ready? Say I'm listening. I'm going to tell you about a man that God used and the Holy Spirit changed, all right? When Jesus was here in person on the earth, he had how many disciples? Very good. One of those disciples' name was Peter. Do you remember Peter? Peter loved Jesus when he was with him those three and a half years. Peter loved walking with Jesus and seeing people healed. Peter just loved going around and watching Jesus raise the dead. And sometimes Jesus would call Peter to come with him into special places, like he climbed the hill that Pastor Micah talked about. And he got to see Jesus and Moses and Elijah. Peter was one of three going one time, Jesus called Peter and James and John. He said, Peter, you can come in the house of Jairus. I'm about to raise this little girl from the dead. Come on, Peter. I'm going to let you watch. Peter got to go into amazing places with Jesus, and he loved Jesus. But something happened. Peter was also still afraid of what people thought about him. And it showed one night in a terrible way. Jesus was praying in the Garden of Gethsemane because he was about to die. And they came to arrest Jesus in that garden. Peter was there in the Garden of Gethsemane with Jesus when he was there. All of a sudden, the guards came out and they arrested Jesus. And when they did, they took Jesus to a courtyard. And when they took him to the courtyard... They were about to present Jesus to this court that was evil men who did not love Jesus. Jesus was in trouble. He was about to be crucified. He needed a friend. But when they came and arrested Jesus in the garden, Peter, James, and John, and all the disciples that were with them ran away and left Jesus all by himself to be arrested. And they took Jesus and put him in this court. The Bible says that when the, all the other disciples, they were running away because they were scared. Peter was also scared. But the Bible says that Peter came back and he snuck into that courtyard where there was a fire. There was a fire and there were some just people standing around the fire that night outside the courtyard. And Peter came and he was looking for Jesus. He was wondering, he wanted to get close enough that he could still see what was going on, but he didn't want anybody to know that he was there watching. But Jesus was standing there being tried and something terrible happened. Watch. Hey, hey, I, I've seen you before. You follow Jesus. No, 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 I'm not. No, she's right. I saw you at Jesus last week. I don't even know what you're talking about. I know exactly what he's talking about. I saw you with Jesus when he was healing thousands of people. You're a friend of Jesus. No, don't say that. I'm not his friend. The Bible says when Peter said to those people, no, I do not know Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus from that courtyard turned and just looked at Peter. Peter turned and saw the eyes of Jesus. And Peter was so devastated that he had hurt and denied his friend that he took off running away. But when Jesus was crucified and came back to life, you know what Jesus did to Peter? Before Jesus went back to heaven, he said, Peter, he found Peter over there. Over, he was on a seashore. Jesus was cooking some fish. And he brought Peter over there. And Peter, because he had denied Jesus three times, you know what Jesus did to help Peter? Jesus was cooking some fish after he was raised from the dead. And he invited Peter to come over there to this campfire. Peter and Jesus together. Jesus knew what Peter had done. He heard it. But Jesus looked at Peter and he said, Peter, do you love me? Peter was so ashamed. He said, Lord, you know I love you. 
He said, feed my sheep. He kept cooking his fish. He said, Peter, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know I love you. Yes, I love you. Jesus said, then Peter, feed my sheep. Jesus kept turning the fish over. And the third time, Peter, do you love me? Lord, why do you ask? You know I love you. Peter, go feed my lambs. Jesus knew how bad Peter felt about denying him three times. So Jesus went to Peter and three times had Peter to say out loud, I do love you. I do love you. Yes, I love you. So Peter could hear himself tell Jesus three times. You know why Jesus did that? For Peter to be healed. Because Jesus loves us even when we have failed him. Did you know that? But you know what Jesus did? He told Peter and those 12 disciples, boys, I want y'all, I'm about to go to heaven. I'm about to go ascend up into heaven and be with my father. And right before Jesus is over here and the spirit of God's about to make his feet come off the ground. He looks at those 12 boys along with a hundred and several other hundred people. He says, everybody, I need you to go to Jerusalem. You stay there. You stay there in Jerusalem and you pray because I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit and you stay there and you pray until the Holy Ghost comes. So those 12, when Jesus went up into heaven and they were standing there like, they were like, whoa, now they, we got to get to Jerusalem. The Bible says all those 120 people, they go into an upper room and they started praying and they didn't know what to expect. They didn't know what the Holy Ghost would look like. Jesus just said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit. They didn't know if the Holy Spirit would be somebody to come and knock on the door and go, knock, knock, knock. I'm the Holy Spirit. They had no idea what was going to happen. But in this video, it will give you a little bit of an idea of what might have happened in that upper room while those people were praying. Watch. Turn it up. Lights down. It's good to see you again, Stephen. Matthew. What form will it take? When will it come? Jesus said all we have to do is ask. I have been asking. Every day. The Holy Spirit will come when the time is right. I think we should pray together. Our Father, who is in heaven, Hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
How can we speak those languages? The Holy Spirit. He is with us. Do you know who one of those men was in that room right there? Peter. And when Peter received the power of the Holy Spirit, he was not afraid anymore. Because that day when they began to speak other languages, the people outside started going, are they drunk? What's wrong with those people? And now all of a sudden, the man who was afraid of what people would think about them did something crazy. This is that which was prophesied by the prophet Joel. Sons and daughters, the Holy Spirit would be poured out on all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Young men will see visions and old men will dream dreams. But you, all of you, you must repent for you have denied the Holy One of Israel. But, but whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved Peter went out that day out of that upper room filled with the Holy Ghost he didn't care what anybody thought anymore all of a sudden he started saying you denied the Holy One of Israel what Peter what are you talking about come on he had just denied him but he was forgiven he was free he was filled with the Holy Spirit get up on your feet right now come on kids all over this room don't talk to anybody please 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 because right now right now in this room today the spirit of the lord has come he's going to baptize you in the holy ghost please i want to ask no one move i want to ask no one talk because the holy spirit tonight right now is here with a gift the gift for you the same gift for you tonight thank you peter come on the same gift. Listen. How many of you want to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Peter said that day, the Holy Spirit, He's for you. He's for your children. He's for your children's children. And He's to all that are afar off in 2021. The gift of of God of the Holy Spirit is available to every single one of you in this room now put your hands down and look at Miss Karen let me tell you something about this gift of the Holy Spirit he's very precious to God God does not give the Holy Spirit to people who do not really want him you cannot receive the Holy Spirit half-hearted not really meaning it that's why that night I prayed so fervently because I wanted the Holy Spirit with all of my heart. Do you know how to receive a gift from God? I'm going to show you something. This gift from God of the Holy Spirit, He wants you to receive it. You don't have to do this. Please give me the Holy Spirit. Please, please give me the Holy Spirit, please. Please, I want that gift. I want that gift. Please give me that gift. Please. Please give me the Holy Spirit. Please give me the Holy Spirit. You don't have to do that. He wants to give you this gift. Do you know how you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit? Just like this. That's how easy it is, thank you Jesus, to receive the Holy Spirit. Kids, tonight we're gonna give you the opportunity to receive 
this holy gift from God. What you do tonight when you come to receive is you come with a heart ready. When I was saying a few minutes ago, when I was eight years old, and I was saying, fill me with the Holy Spirit. I wasn't saying that because I was begging him like he didn't, like I wasn't good enough. That's not why I was praying that way. I was praying that way because I wanted God to know, I want everything you have. I want you, God. I want you, God. I wanted to pray with all of my heart. I didn't want to stand there like this. I've never received, I've never seen anybody receive the Holy Spirit like this. I've never, I never have. You receive the Holy Spirit the same way you receive Jesus as your Savior. You ask for Him. When you ask for Jesus to come in your heart, did He come in your heart? When you ask Him to forgive your sins, did He forgive you? Same thing with the Holy Ghost. When you receive, when you want to receive the Holy Spirit, you ask, fill me with the Holy Ghost. And you mean it with all of your heart. And you tell God, I receive the Holy Ghost. And the same way you receive Jesus, the Holy Ghost is going to come in you. And once He comes in you, you just open your mouth and you just let that river, Jesus said out of your belly, is going to flow a river of living water. And you use your voice and you open your mouth and you let the Holy Spirit say anything He wants to say. You won't understand it in your mind. Your mind will be saying, I don't know what you're saying. But your spirit is letting the Holy Spirit pray through you. You're praying, right? Letting the Holy Spirit use your voice and use your tongue and you just worship Jesus in that heavenly language. Would you take about six steps back without talking? I need the leadership team to come out. I need Chosen. I need everybody out here with me. Please come forward and just stand behind me. Take about six steps back, please, even further. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come fill, come on, and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. That's beautiful, kids. Lift your hands and sing it to God. By your presence, sing one more time. Jesus right now. Sit your presence, Holy Spirit. We love you, Spirit of God. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. 
I hear the Holy Spirit telling me to tell somebody, don't be afraid of me. Don't be afraid of the Holy Spirit. He's gentle. He's the Spirit of Jesus who's perfect love. If you're in this room right now, you say, Miss Karen, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. More than that, you say, Heavenly Father, I want to receive the Holy Spirit. Come and stand right down here, quietly and reverently. Come on, come on. Miss Karen, I just keep standing. Don't kneel. Just stand. Just stand right there. If you say, Miss Karen, I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Come on. No, 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 man, no. If you're not coming forward, you're going to become our prayer team tonight. So if you'll just step back for the moment to make room and help us get the kids down here, I'm going to need the engagement of everybody in the room tonight. No, 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 no. Katie, I need you please to come. Oh, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus. Katie, I need you to help me right here. Thank you, Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord. Anyone else still coming? If you're still coming, right, wave at me so I'll know. I'll see where the line is. They're still coming. They're still coming. Thank you, Lord. Come on, sing it just one more time. Those of you that have come to receive the Holy Ghost, lift your hands again.